Easter, kids. This week you received a piece of red crepe paper and a sticker. Keep those by you, we'll be doing those later. But right now, I want you to watch this video called Happy Day. Greatest day in history. Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty grave Life eternal You have won the day Shout it out Jesus is alive He's alive And oh Happy day Happy day You wash my sin away Oh Happy day Happy day This week, every time I say, we celebrate Jesus, I want you to put your hands by your face and go, hooray, Jesus. We are celebrating Jesus. Hooray, hooray Jesus, Christ. because it is Easter. And we're going to learn all about how much Jesus loves us and what he has done for us. But first, we're going to our Bible memory buddy, Olivia. Hey, wait a minute. I don't have that poster here. I lost it. I misplaced it. Have you ever had that happen? But anyways, I did give you a sticker, and it is Olivia the Barn Owl. So if you can look at Olivia, I have a two fun facts for Olivia, and you're going to decide which one is true. Barn Owls live in every continent in the world except for Asia. If you think it's Asia, flap your wings, not Asia, or Antarctica. Brrr. So, barn owls live in every continent except for Asia or Antarctica. Pastor Greg's voting for Antarctica. Drum roll. Mm, he's right. <laughs> they don't live there. Let's learn more about barn owls and Olivia, our Bible memory buddy, with this video. I'm Olivia, and I'm a barn owl. You can find barn owls in almost every part of the world. In fact, 
We live on every continent except Antarctica. Some of us live in the desert. Others prefer the big city life. Some of my barn owl relatives built their nests in baseball stadiums where they're safe. <laughs> Get it? They're safe. <laughs> Personally, I prefer to live in the forest. I like to make my nest in a cave. Caves are nice and cool. They're good places to hide out and rest during the day. <sighs> we barn owls look for food at night. God gave us good eyesight, even in the dark. But if you're outside at night, you probably won't hear us fly by. Our soft feathers help us zoom silently through the sky. Thanks to God's brilliant creating, we barn owls see well, hear well, and fly quietly. So finding a midnight snack is a breeze. Yum! I know that the dark can be a little spooky or scary for you humans. I get it. And even during the day, sad times can make your hearts feel a little gloomy and dark. When you feel that way, look at my picture. Maybe my heart-shaped face will remind you of God's love, even in dark times. In the Bible book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son. That's Jesus! In the Bible, Jesus' friends went through a very dark time. Jesus had died. For three days, he wasn't with them anymore. They couldn't see him, hear his voice, be near him. But then, just as he promised, Jesus came back to life. His friends went to the cave where they put his body, and it wasn't there. Jesus was alive. The dark time was over, and there was reason to celebrate. Jesus had beat sin when he died on the cross, and he beat death when he came back to life. God's love won! And I have good news for you humans. Jesus wants to be your friend forever. Jesus, friend who loves you so much, he'd give up his life for you. Jesus, a friend who forgives you when you aren't such a good friend. There is nothing you can do to make Jesus stop loving you. You can't see Jesus with you because he's not a human anymore. But you can pray and talk with him anytime. He always hears you. Here's the best part. When you're friends with Jesus, someday you will get to see him in heaven face to face. Jesus wants to be your friend now and forever. Now that's something to celebrate. We celebrate Jesus! Hooray, Jesus! The Bible is God's true love story for us. It's made of a bunch of little books, and our Bible memory verse this week comes from John. John 3, verse 16. For this is how God's love... Can you do this with your fingers? God's love... For the world, that he gave his one and only son. So, for this is how God loved the world, he gave his one and only son. That's a great Bible verse, and we celebrate Jesus, hooray Jesus, by learning our Bible verses and tucking them away in our hearts so that we know all about Jesus and constantly can feel Jesus' love for us. Now you're going to watch the music video called Power in the Blood. Do 
I want you to get out your streamer and just hold it up by you. I want you to look at your streamer and I want you to think of things that were really happy in your life. Good times. It might be a special vacation you want, went on. It might be a time you did great in your soccer game. It might be a time where you had a sleepover at someone special's house. Oh, there's so many good things. I want you to think about those. Now, I want you to think, did those good times ever come to an end? Hmm. Just like our streamer has a top and a bottom, it has a beginning and an end. There is a saying that says, all good things must come to an end. Do you think that's true? Hmm. Well, it is true. In life, we have a beginning when we are born and an end when we die. Um, when we go on vacation, we have the start of our vacation, we have the end of our vacation. Hmm. When we hmm, go camping, play a video game, we have a start of that and we have an end of that. But I want to tell you, life does have a beginning and an end, but Jesus came to change all that. That's why we celebrate Jesus. Hooray, Jesus! His love and his power conquered death and change things forever. When you usually see a streamer, it usually does mean something happy is happening, something exciting. So I want you to take your streamer and we are going to celebrate Jesus. Hooray, Jesus! So, as I go through the story of Jesus, I just want you to wave your streamer when you hear something happy happening about Jesus. Jesus was born. Jesus healed sick people. Jesus fed huge crowds. Jesus had a blind man and he made him see. Jesus did lots of miracles. Jesus showed love to people who seemed unlovable, but not everyone celebrated Jesus. Go ahead and put your streamer down. Some people were not fans of Jesus at all. Some religious leaders thought he was a liar, so they made a plan to get him arrested. Soldiers didn't just arrest Jesus, but they were mean and they teased him. Listen to what happened. And what I want you to do is when you hear something bad that happens to Jesus, I'm going to have Pastor Greg help me out. He's just going to take a little rip and tear a little rip off of that streamer. So I want you to do the same at home. When you hear something bad in the Bible that I read, what happened to Jesus, just tear a little piece off. I'm reading from Mark 15 verse 16. Have to turn the page. The soldiers led Jesus away into a place and called together a whole community of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. You rip it all the way off, Pastor Greg. Way off. Yep, all the way off. Every time you hear just a little piece, yep. And they set that thorns on him. They began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff, and they spit on him. Falling to their knees, they teased him and paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put on his own clothes. Then they led him out to be crucified. For three long days, Jesus' friends lived in fear. They lived in shock. They didn't know what happened. Maybe the sh soldiers would come and get them next. They were scared. Those days probably felt dark, endless, and hopeless. 
I want you to close your eyes for a minute and just experience what would happen with Jesus gone out of our lives. How dark and hopeless that would be. Jesus is our forever friend and we wouldn't have him anymore. As you're thinking about that, I want you to lower your hand and just drop all those scraps on the floor. I want you to bring back up your hand, fold it, and put that stone in front of it again. So open your eyes and I'm going to read what happens next. Keep your hand and that stone in front of it. Very early, the women came to the tomb just after sunrise and they looked at each other. Who rolled the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? He was gone. He had risen. We celebrate Jesus. Hooray, Jesus, because he is not in the grave. He has risen. Jesus conquered death. So is there a beginning for Jesus? Yes. Is there an end? No. And there is not an end for us either. He is our forever friend. He will forever be by you. He will forever love you today and tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. You get the idea? There's nothing that you can say or do that will change how Jesus feels about you. He is always ready to listen to you and to love you. Happy Easter, everyone.